to have the creature teachers here. I hope that all of you are so excited too to see some creatures. Give them a big round of applause. Thank you guys. Can you guys in the back hear me? Can you give me a thumbs up way back there if you can hear me? Okay. So I'm going to try to get through as much of the animal information as we can as quickly as possible because there is a lot of you. And at the end of the presentation, you guys get to come up and meet the animal ambassadors up close. You don't have to pet anything you don't want to pet, but we do have petting time. If you are interested in petting, can you guys show me two fingers? And then can you guys pet your arm so I can see that you can pet gently? That way I know you guys can follow directions because if you pet too rough like that, you will not be able to pet my animals. They have come home with bruises, they can get scared and hurt, and I do not want to see that. You pop my animal, I pop you back. Got it? All right. Rules are very clear. You set the rules on how we play. Now, when you guys are done petting, you guys are all out there. You've all been picking your nose and sticking your hands in your mouth, and you're all gonna pet the animals in the same places. So when you guys are done, you need to go to the bathroom or get the hand sanitizer over here and wash because I really don't wanna deal with another pandemic, okay? Because we're not worried about the animal germs, we're worried about your guys' germs, and there's lots of you, and this is how we make a nice little pandemic all over again. So when you guys are done, you need to wash your hands. I know you guys are going to have questions. I'm not going to answer any questions until the end. That way I can get through the stories with the animals and you guys can ask me those questions at the end because you guys are going to come up here. You're going to enter from this side of the stage. You're going to walk by the table, touch all this stuff. You're going to meet a bunch of the animals that I have up here and then you, when you're right in front of me and you're sitting in front of me, that's when you can ask me your questions. Then when we're not shouting over each other and I can hear you. Okay, can you guys say yes with your hands if you understand? Awesome. So we're gonna start really, really small first. Raise your hand if you know where the island of Madagascar is. That's where, not the movie you guys, the island, the island. Raise your hand if you know what a lemur is. I did not bring a lemur. You guys know what Zabumafu is? All that stuff. Those weird animals come from Madagascar. They have lots of weird animals there because they have lots of weird habitats. But the animal we're going to talk about lives in their rainforest jungle areas. And it's called a Madagascar hissing cockroach. So these guys are super, super important in the jungle. These guys help use up all the resources that fall out of the trees. So all the fruit, and the flowers and the leaves, all that stuff that would rot on the jungle floor, these guys eat all of that. They use those vitamins and those resources and they use them up. And these guys become healthy little jungle nuggets that everything eats. Little six-legged nuggets. Now, you guys, insects have six legs. They have three on each side. You can't really see that from way back there, but trust me, they're six legs. And they're really sticky. That's how he's sticking to my shirt and climbing around. This type of cockroach does not have wings. They can't fly. They're very heavy body cockroaches. Now, if these guys get scared, they make a hissing noise. Can you guys make a hissing noise? Oh, make it a little louder than that. Come on. There we go. It's got to be scary because if a predator grabbed him and tried to eat him, he has to startle them. So he'd go, ksh, ksh, ksh. It's very loud and it startles a predator. But you guys made that sound with your mouth. These guys have a whole bunch of holes in the sides of their tummy. Can you guys touch your ribs? They have a whole bunch of holes in the sides of their tummy and they suck in that air and they squeeze it out like a whoopee cushion. Raise your hand, don't show me, but raise your hand if you've made armpit farts before. Don't lie. I need to see more dad hands in the air. There we go. So these guys use their bodies to make that sound. Can you guys say stridulation? Stridulation is a big word that means that animals make noise with their body, not their mouths. Raise your hand if you've heard crickets chirp before. Raise your hand if you've heard rattlesnakes shaking their tail before. Yeah, they all are using their body to make that noise, not their mouth. 
So when these guys get startled, they make that hissing sound. And then the predator goes, ah, and they drop them. But when they drop them, they don't get hurt because these guys have a really tough exoskeleton. Can you guys say exoskeleton? That exoskeleton is what protects them because sometimes my cockroaches get scared by all those naked monkeys out there and they jump off of me and try to run away. But that exoskeleton keeps them safe when they hit the concrete and they'll just flip over and they run under my table to hide. That exoskeleton is really tough like armor. So when these guys grow, they have to shed their exoskeleton. Can you guys say molt? Molting is when they shed that exoskeleton. They pull and stretch and they pull off that exoskeleton so that they can grow into their new exoskeleton. So when they first molt, they're very soft and squishy. Have you guys ever soaked in a bathtub and had squishy fingers? When you get squishy soft fingers, when these guys molt, they're a pinkish white color. And it takes a couple of days for them to turn brown and black again so their exoskeleton's hard enough to protect them. Now, so these guys are not gross. They don't eat trash like people think of with cockroaches. They're very, very healthy and they're a huge part of the ecosystem. Now, they're very, very good at having babies. I started out with seven cockroaches. Do you guys want to know how many I have? I have over 40 cockroaches. And I would have over 400 cockroaches, except that a lot of the animals I brought today eat them. Remember, they're little jungle nuggets. So a lot of my other animals will eat the cockroaches. So in order for me to not have several hundred cockroaches, I feed a bunch of them to my other animals. So I only have 40. It's not that many. But they eat all my veggie scraps and my fruit scraps from the kitchen. So they are, they're very easy to keep as pets. They're really quiet. They don't bother anybody and they don't stink. They're really cool. Now, I'm going to show you guys some stuff here really quick. Do you guys remember how I just said the cockroaches molt? They shed their exoskeleton. Tarantulas do the same thing. So when you guys come up here, you guys are going to be able to see this. And if you can't make it out from way back there, this is a molt from one of my tarantulas. This is not a dead tarantula. Can you say it's not dead? A little bit louder. It's not dead. This is not a dead spider. This is the molt from one of my tarantulas. So when you come up here, this is going to be one that you can come and put your whole hand over it and see if your hand is bigger or smaller than this tarantula molt. And when they molt, everything comes off. The hair, the little covers on their eyes, the little slips on their fangs. And when they molt, their fangs are all soft. And they're so soft they can't eat food for two weeks. They can't eat. They just have to sit there and wait for their exoskeleton to harden back up. And their fangs will be bright white. And as they harden, they turn pink and then red. And when their fangs are all black, then their exoskeletons harden back up and it can keep them safe. Now, it's a little bit windy out here, not very much. But because it's a little windy, I'm not going to bring my tarantula out because she's a big chicken and she gets scared. And I don't want her to jump and fall off my hands and get hurt. So when you guys come up close, you'll be able to check her out. But she, like I said, she's a big chicken, so I don't want anyone to tap on the glass and try to scare her, okay? You got to promise. Can you guys say, I promise I won't scare the tarantula? Okay, I'm going to take you at your word. Because she got scared at a birthday party yesterday. A kid went, and they blew into the tank and they tried to scare her and she kicked all her hairs off and now her butt is bald. She has a naked butt. It's a big pink naked butt, just like a baby butt. There's no hair on it. So when you guys scare tarantulas, the way they protect themselves is by kicking those hairs off their body. Because if a predator was chasing them, they'd try to kick those hairs up into my eyes and my mouth and they try to get those itchy hairs up there so when I'm sitting there rubbing to get it out, she can run away. So we don't want to scare her because then she'll be even more bald. They really don't want to have to try to fight with you guys. They don't want to bite you. They only have venom for their food. Are you guys bugs? Nobody? No one? Okay. So these tarantulas only eat bugs. So you guys are totally safe. Raise your hand if you've been stung by a bee before. And you all survived. So bee stings are going to hurt more than a tarantula bite. And it's because bee stings are meant to hurt. That's how they protect their hive. 
It's defensive venom. They sting to make you hurt and go away. A tarantula uses their venom to catch their food. It's just supposed to stop it. And since you're not a bug, the venom's not gonna work. Can you guys touch your spine? Touch your backbone. You guys are vertebrates. You have a very complex nervous system. Our little cockroach is an invertebrate, so it's a bug. It doesn't have the same kind of nerve system you guys do. So when a tarantula bites a bug, it's game over. It's really bad. But if they bite you guys, it's going to kind of sting for like a day, but that's it. A bee sting is going to be way worse. So I'm not worried about my tarantula biting me. But her itchy hairs, they itch really bad. You guys live in the city, but I'm hoping some of you know what stinging nettle is. Do you know what stinging nettle is? Stinging nettle is a weed that grows here in the Pacific Northwest, and if you touch it, you'll itch in that same spot for like a week. It's super, super itchy. Now, that's kind of what their hairs are going to feel like. So because it's windy, because it could startle her, I'm not going to bring her out, but you guys can get that up-close look when you come up by the table. And you guys can peek in her cage like a weirdo and look in her window. But I don't want to see anyone knocking on the glass and trying to scare her, okay? What do you think is going to happen if you try to scare my spider? I'll get you. I'll get you if you try to scare my spider. Raise your hand if you guys know what an amphibian is. Ooh, lots of you. Not all of you, but lots of you. Amphibians are things like frogs and salamanders and newts and toads. They're usually slimy and they usually look like tadpoles when they're babies. Raise your hand if you know what a tadpole is. Tadpoles look like little fish. They have a big head and their tail comes out behind them and they swim in the water and they have gills. Raise your hand if you know what gills are. Gills are how fish breathe underwater. And those gills are big and they help them breathe so they can never have to come out of the water. But as the tadpoles grow, their tails get absorbed into their body and they sprout arms and legs and toes. And then their, their gills are gonna seal up and they grow lungs. Can you guys take a deep breath? They grow lungs like you guys, and they can come out of the water and have a whole new habitat and different things to eat. So amphibians go through things that make them change. It's called metamorphosis. Can you guys say metamorphosis? That wasn't convincing. Say it again. OK, there we go. So that means they change. Caterpillars go through metamorphosis, and they turn into butterflies and moths. So different things change. Now amphibians are still cold-blooded, just like reptiles, but because they change, they're different. So the first reptiles I'm gonna show you guys, there's gonna be a daddy and a baby. And they look exactly the same. One of them's just smaller. So when I show you guys, I want you to not be loud with your voice. I want you to point with your finger at which one is the baby, okay? Because it'll be the small one. You guys think you can do that? You say yes with your hands if you think you can do that. Okay. All right. Hold on. Okay, you guys. Which one's the baby? Point to the baby. Is it the one on my right or my left? Right. That's the baby. And they look exactly the same. They're just one smaller. They both have two front legs. They both have two back legs. They both have spiky tails. They both have very cute little cheeks. They're very, very cute. So our lizards here are called Euromastics. Can you guys say Euromastics? He's looking at that plane up there. He thought it was a hawk. He went, oh, and was like looking at real close because these guys are prey animals. Lots of animals eat these guys. These guys live in tunnels or burrows. Raise your hand if you know what a tunnel or a burrow is. It's a hole that goes underground because they live in Nigeria where it's super, super hot. And I mean like really hot. You guys are kind of hot right now, but it gets like 120 degrees there. Like you could cook an egg on the sidewalk very hot. And these guys are reptiles. 
they don't sweat like we do to cool off. So when it gets too hot, they have to find shade. And then the only shade they're gonna find in the desert is in their little burrows and tunnels. So they're gonna dig, 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 and go way down underground. And that way they can stay in the cool air. And these guys are herbivores. Can you guys say herbivores? That means they eat plants. So all that green grass looks really delicious. But in the desert, plants don't open up all the time because it's too hot. So the plants will close up their flowers and their leaves because if they were open during the day, they would dry and fry and die. So they only open up when it's cool out, which is like early in the morning or late at night. So these guys wake up when the plants wake up and they come out and they nibble on their little leaves and nibble on the flowers and they get a little moisture from that and that's where they get their water. And then when it gets hot, they go back down into their tunnels. Now these guys are things that like to get predated on. So things like jackals and hyenas will love to eat and snack on these guys. So when they're hiding in their tunnels, they go down head first and that keeps their butt sticking up. And then you can't see it right now, but that tail is very spiky. And what they'll do when they're down in their tunnel, they'll curl that tail up and then they'll whack that jackal right in the nose. Jackals and hyenas have very soft, wet noses like dogs. So if they stuck their nose down there, that's like throwing a really hard pine cone right at their face. It's gonna hurt pretty bad. So that's the way they protect themselves. But my guys don't get scared of me, so they don't whack me with their tails. They're really nice. Now, when you guys pet him at the end, do you guys remember how we're petting? Our two finger pet, yep. And we're gonna pet down his back and down his spiky tail. But if you pet the other way, your finger is gonna get stuck on his spikes. So you're gonna pet the same direction on him. And his back is gonna feel like the leathery skin on the bottom of your foot. But his tail is gonna feel like a really spiky pine cone. So when you guys feel him, that's what I want you guys to think about and see if there's a better description you guys can think of. You guys are doing so good being quiet. Now the next animal I'm gonna show you guys is another lizard, but it's a little bit bigger. Raise your hand if you know what a carnivore is. Mm, some people know what a carnivore is. Carnivores are things that eat meat. So they have big, sharp teeth. And they use their teeth to tear bites out of their food. You guys are omnivores, so you eat meat and plants. So you have flat, crushing teeth, and you have your sharp canine teeth. And that's how you take bites out of your food and make it small enough for you to swallow. So our carnivore has those big, sharp teeth. Do you guys think when we do petting, we're gonna pet him on his face? Nah, because we can actually poke them in the eye or scare them, and we don't wanna accidentally get on the other end of his teeth. He's been really nice, and he's never bit anybody, and I'd like to keep it that way. So where do you guys think we're gonna pet him? Eyes back, yep. And we're gonna go down his back and down his tail, just like the little lizard. But he's gonna feel very, very different. Raise your hand if you guys have ever touched Indian beads. The really pretty, shiny little jewelry beads. Indian beads are very shiny, very small, and they're very smooth. That's what his scales feel like. So that'll be what you should be expecting when you pet him. So this is Valentino. Can you guys say hi, Valentino? Valentino is a tegu. Tegu is spelled T-E-G-U. Can you guys spell that? T-E-G-U. Tegus are big, smart predator lizards. These guys are from South America. Raise your hand if you've heard of a Komodo dragon. That's his big cousin. Those guys live in Indonesia and they get twice as long as my table. A Komodo dragon gets like 12 feet long. They get super big from nose to tail. And they can eat things like deer and cattle and people. Komodo dragons are very big. But tegus are very big and he's very, very nice. He's smelling me right now because I had that cockroach out. Do you remember I told you I feed those cockroaches to my animals? He smells his dinner and he doesn't know where I put it. 
So he's trying to figure that out right now. There's a lot of you too, so he's guys smelling you guys. He's trying to figure out if you guys are predators or food or a girlfriend. He's just checking you guys out very slowly. He smells with his tongue. Do you guys see his tongue sticking out? When his tongue is sticking out, he's picking up air particles and they're telling his brain all the smells. He can smell the puppies that are running around, the kids, the food. He can smell all that stuff. Hi. What are you doing? He still has nostrils that he breathes through, but the tongue is how he smells. Can you guys see his tail? His tail is right about where my knee is. But if he was a wild tegu, his tail would be touching the ground, right by my feet. He'd have a really long tail. But he was somebody's pet when he was a baby, and he was a little tiny tegu, and he was so small that a cat tried to eat him. And the cat bit off half of his tail, and he's got a whole bunch of scars on his back, because the guy who owned him, the cat was pretty sneaky and got him out of his cage. So he is not going to regrow his tail. Geckos and skinks and little lizards can do that, but big tegus usually don't regrow their tail. So he just has a shorter, stumpier tail. So when you guys pet him, I don't want to see you guys trying to bend his tail or pinch him or being mean, because I'll thump you. I promise. you got to be nice to my animals. Everybody gets scared of reptiles, but they're really, really cool. And he gets wiggly, just like you guys do when you get bored. Raise your hand if you've been bored before. Yeah, if you guys get bored and you get fidgety and wiggly and you start running around like that kid over there, they do that all the time. He doesn't want to sit here in my lap. He's been sitting in the car for three hours for our drive. He wants to get down and look and sniff and he's going to get wiggly. So after a while, I'll have to set him down so he can stretch his legs. Otherwise, he's going to drive me nuts. Now, I have to cut his nails all the time because he pokes holes in my shirts. They're very strong nails. And you guys can see him sniffing and he's looking around trying to figure out what's going on up here. So he'll be one of the animals at the end you guys can pet. And we're going to still do that gentle petting. We'll go down his back. Just like this, and down his tail. Everybody say yes if you understand how we're going to be petting. Okay, just want to make sure everyone's listening, because it gets kind of hard to focus when you guys are looking at the animal, but you're not listening to what I'm saying. Now, I'm going to show you guys a skull here in a second that has very similar carnivore teeth to what Valentino has. Now this will be something you guys can see when you come up here at the end. It's a little skull, so it's a lot smaller than Valentino's, but this skull is from another type of monitor. It's called a savanna monitor. And these guys have the same type of teeth, so they look like little dinosaur bones. So it's going to have really sharp teeth, and it's going to kind of look like a little T-Rex or a Velociraptor. So when you guys come up here, this is another monitor lizard, so another smart predator lizard, just like our tegu. So you guys will be able to check that out. And everything on the table, you guys will be able to touch with our gentle two fingers. I don't want to see anybody picking stuff up. It'll all be gentle petting, but you guys can touch everything on the table. Now, we have two animals left. Those are usually everybody's favorites. But this next one likes to poop and pee on me. So he's kind of messy, but he's really nice and everybody really likes him. So you guys have to be super nice to him, okay? Raise your hand if you guys have seen a turtle before. Raise your hand if you've seen a tortoise before. Turtles live in ponds or water or lakes, and they swim. They have webbed feet like a duck, and they cut through the water really fast because they're super smooth and they have these flat shells. Now, tortoises are going to have big, bulky shells. They get heavy, and they have big tree trunk legs, and they walk around. They don't swim. They would sink like a rock. Now, everybody's going to ask me where the turtle went. I do not have a naked turtle floating around under my table somewhere. Turtles can't come out of their shells. This is from a turtle that died. It got hit by a car. It did not survive. We kept the shell so we could show you guys some really, really important stuff. Can you guys touch your spine again? Touch your backbone. And then touch your ribs again. Your ribs, all the stuff that protects your squishy bits on the inside. Those bones are super important. And in turtles and tortoises, their bones are attached to their shell. They're fused to their shell. 
So when you guys come up, you guys are little, so your hands will fit. You can stick your whole hand inside the shell, and you guys will be able to touch the spine and the ribs that are attached to the shell. That'll be right along the back, and then the ribs will be right along the sides. And so you guys will be able to check that out and feel it. It's pretty cool. Now, can you guys knock on your head really fast? Knock on your head. If you guys can feel that, the turtles and tortoises can feel that. It's a bone, just like your skull. It doesn't feel good when someone says, hi, and they just punch you. It doesn't feel nice. So I don't want to see anybody knocking on the turtle shell and trying to scare him, because then he'll pull his head in and he'll hide and it scares them. They can feel all that stuff on their shell. So when you guys are petting them, they can feel it. So if you can touch your skull, you can feel that. If you pet it nicely, they can feel it too. So I don't want to see you guys being rough with him. Otherwise, I'll make him poop on you, okay? All right? Okay. Now, my tortoise is very, very nice, and he's usually very, very brave. So he usually keeps his head out. But he does, like I said, he does like to poop and pee on people. So I got to make sure he doesn't get my feet. Can you guys say hi, Reggie? Reggie is a red-footed tortoise. Can you guys see those red and orange scales on his front legs? That's why they're called that. These guys are from South America, just like our tegu and our tarantula. Now, these guys have the same job that our cockroach had. They eat all that fruit and biomass and all that stuff that falls out of the trees. So if it's falling out of the trees, like leaves, flowers, fruit, all that stuff is what he eats. But he does one step further than the cockroach. He poops out the seeds all over the jungle. He's a little gardener, and his poops are little fertilizer pods. So all the time he's eating papaya and fruit, he just poops those little seeds out and makes new trees and bushes and flowers, and he just keeps spreading the little jungle love. He's a little gardener. So that's why he poops all the time. It's how he's supposed to work. So it's not because he's sick. He just makes a mess. That's who he is. Now, when you guys come up here, you're going to do that gentle petting on his shell, just like we talked about. I don't want to see anyone pinch his toes or poke him in the nose, okay? We're going to be very nice to Reggie. He's one of our many rescue animals. When we got Reggie, he was found in Tillamook, Oregon. And if you don't know where that is, it's the Rocky Cold Beach. Not South America, not hot and humid. It's very opposite temperature and climate. And so he was really, really sick. Raise your hand if you guys have ever been sick before. If you've ever had a cold or pneumonia or anything like that, it was really bad. He kind of sounded like Darth Vader. He couldn't breathe. He sounded awful. And he had to take medicine for a whole year because then there was, he was out there during wildfire season and the smoke damaged his lungs. There was a lot of worry he was even going to get better. So the vet said we had to give him medicine. Do you know how hard it is to give a tortoise medicine when they can pull their head in their shell and hide? It's very, very hard. So we had to hide it. So we snuck it into blueberries and then he'd smell it and he'd figure it out and he'd stop eating the blueberries. And then he'd do it to the raspberries and the grapes and the blackberries and then the watermelon and then the papaya and the strawberries. And he would just stop eating stuff when he figured out the medicine was in there. So we had to change it a lot. But it took a whole year, but he finally got better. So when you guys come up here at the end to pet him, he's gonna be in his travel bin so he doesn't poop on anybody. But I want you guys to listen very close and very quiet, and you might get to hear him. His breathing is almost quiet again, but it's very small. It'll sound like this. Psst, psst, psst. It's like he's saying psst, like he wants to tell you a secret or whisper to you. So you guys will have to listen very carefully. So when you guys come up here to pet him, I don't want you to forget. I want you guys to try to see if you can hear him breathing. Now I've got one more animal left to show you guys. And this is usually the one that scares everybody. So I just wanna talk about it first so we don't have panic. Raise your hand if you guys are nervous or scared of snakes. Okay, so not everybody is, but there's some people. 
I'm not going to make you pet anything you don't want to. I don't want you to be scared. I want you to have a good time, just like I want my animals to have a good time. So if you feel like you're going to panic, pass out, scream, any of the above, please extricate yourself from the crowd so that you don't cause mass panic. So the animal will stay up here with me. That way, if you feel nervous, you're back there. But she's, she's pretty big. She's a big snake. But she's a baby. So I don't want everybody freaking out because you freak out, you scare the kids. And I'm, the kids I'm talking about is my snake. So I want you guys to be nice and calm and not scare the baby because the baby snake's only three years old. Raise your hand if you've been three years old before. Everyone should be raising their hands. They start out really small. And when I say small, like, you guys are gonna think he's really big, but he's not that big. He's gonna get really big, okay? So let me pull him out here really quick. Okay, guys. So this one is our little baby three-year-old I was talking about. This is a Burmese python. Yeah, they're a constrictor. They have no venom, no poison, so they squeeze their food. Do you guys think he's trying to squeeze me to death right now? No. For them, constricting is part of eating. So it's just like you guys have to chew your food to start eating. They have to constrict their food to eat it. They don't just start eating. They have to constrict it, and they hold it still, and then they try to eat it. It takes them a long time. And he's holding on to me. I'm not holding him. So he's being very gentle and doing a piggyback ride with no hands and no legs. It's very, very gentle and nice. Even though he's a baby and he can get nervous of all the naked monkeys out here that are really scary, he's being very, very brave. Now, Burmese pythons get really big. And when I mean really big, I'm not exaggerating. Like, if we have a grown-up Burmese python, they're going to be from that end of the concrete stair all the way to this end of the concrete stair. They're going to get over 20 feet long. They're going to get really, really big when they grow up. And everybody thinks that big snakes are really cool. But then you have to clean up really big snake poop. And they eat really big things. And if you can't find really big things, then the snakes get hungry, and then people get scared and worried. So he's only eating little things right now. Even though he's seven feet long already, at three years old, he still has to eat small things. Let me show you guys something. So, you guys can see him. His head is as big as my thumb. So his head is still very, 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 very small, even though he's like seven feet long. So that means he's only gonna eat something about this big. Raise your hand if you think you know what animals are this big that he might eat. All right, you can say it if you think you know. Rats, mice, he eats things like quail. In the wild, he could eat all kinds of small animals. Baby frogs are too small. He's too big for them already. But these guys eat a lot of different stuff. Now, I'm way too big to be food. My head is too big. My shoulders are too broad. Everything on me is too big. So even though he's longer than I am, he can't eat me. Can you guys pull on your skin on your cheeks? Pull your cheeks really, really, really far. Pull your cheeks. Your skin does not stretch super far. So even though they can unhinge their jaws and swallow their food pretty big and it's whole and they take a big bite, they can't stretch their skin. It's just their ligaments and their jaws that kind of move and stretch. So their skin still limits how big of a meal that is. That's why I use my thumb rule. Because most big snakes, their head is always a lot smaller than you think it is. So when you guys come up for petting, this is going to be another one of our two finger gentle pets. And you, this snake is so soft, though, you can pet both directions. And they feel a lot like silk or silicone. It's very, very smooth. And like I said, when you guys come up, I don't want to see any pinching or rough handling because they get bruises and get scared. So can you guys relax your arm for me? Relax your arm. And then I want you guys to pinch your arm fat. Pinch your arm fat when it's relaxed. All those muscles are relaxed. 
That's what the snakes feel like. They're squishy, and then there's a bone way down in the middle. So that's what they feel like. Then I want you to flex your muscle really tight, and then touch your hard flexed muscle. When, when the snakes are constricting, their muscles are being used, they're tight. And so they are strong, and they're using them. But when they're relaxed, like this snake, I, they can get bruises. So I don't want to see anybody pinching them, okay? We're going to do that same gentle pet. Now I've got one more thing we're going to talk about with the snake before we jump over to other stuff. I told you, he's about seven feet long. Can you guys show me with your hands or your arms? Give me your best guess at how big his tail is. So out of his big, long body, how much of his body is his tail? I want to see some good guesses before I tell you. Let me see. Show me your arms and your hands. Let me see some guesses. Okay. Hey, get out of my shirt. Okay. You guys ready to see his tail? All right. I'll show you. Okay, there's his tail, the last six or seven inches. That's it. And that's because that's where his cloaca starts. Can you guys say cloaca? Cloaca is the snake's butt. That's where they poop, that's where they pee, that's where they have their babies and lay their eggs. So the cloaca is the same thing that amphibians, birds, and reptiles all have. They have one hole for everything. So the snakes and stuff, you can't tell where their cloaca is half the time because they don't have legs like lizards do. So their tail is the very end of their body. So I'm going to show you guys really quick what you're going to see on the table. We're going to talk about it really quick. And when you guys are released and you can come up here, that's when you're going to ask me any questions you had. There's a lot of you. So we're going to try to get through the petting as quickly as possible so everyone can get home before midnight, okay? So when you guys come up here, the first bowl of stuff you guys are going to see and touch <laughs> The first bowl of stuff you're going to touch and see is snake shed. There's snake shed, there's lizard shed, there's a whole bunch of it. It's very fragile, it's like tissue paper. So I want you guys to be extra gentle when you're using your two fingers to touch it so we can keep it nice for everybody. So this is, again, one of the touching things. I want you guys to keep everything on the table, but you can touch it. We're going to have that tarantula molt. Can you guys say it's not dead? Not dead. Not a dead spider. It's our molt. This is the one you can stick your hand over and see if your hand is bigger or smaller. And then we have our little tarantula right behind that in its cage. I don't want to see anybody knocking on that glass. Okay? Okay. I'm watching you. We've got our alligator skull up here. Can you guys make a U-shape with your hands? Alligators have a U-shaped snout. It's broad like a paddle, and their top teeth hang down. A crocodile is going to have a V-shaped snout. Can you guys make a V with your fingers? It's a pointy, narrow snout. Cayman and crocodile have pointy snouts, and their teeth interlock like a zipper, tops and bottoms, all in and out like that. You should never be that close to either of their faces in the wild. But that's a really good way to tell their skulls apart. So that's one you're going to be able to touch when you come up here. Again, everything on the table is for touching. I don't want anybody picking stuff up. You guys are on the wrong side, which is why I told everybody to stay seated. You're on the wrong side. Please go sit down. We have our lizard skull over here that you guys are going to be able to feel and touch and check out the teeth. And then we have my book up here you guys can take a look at. The book is for the top 10 best beginner reptiles. If you are interested in finding it, it's on Amazon. It'll answer a lot of your questions you'll probably have. We have our turtle shell. This is going to be one that you guys can stick your whole hand inside to feel the spine and the ribs and check that out. We have this last bowl up here. It's a snake spine. Can you guys touch your spine again? You guys are vertebrates and so are snakes. So they feel pain and fear and all those things, just like you guys. So gentle handling for everything. And the everything in that big cage, we're going to have one of these lizards out for you guys to touch with my assistant. You guys need to be super nice to Fred and George, okay, because they're little. So I want extra gentle fingers on the little animals, okay? Can you guys say yes with your hands if you understand? Okay. And what are we doing when we're done petting? 
Okay. Now, when, they, when the people in the pink shirts, when they tell you you guys can get up, you're going to line up on that side so you can head to the bathrooms and wash or get hand sanitizer, okay? And that'll give me a second to bring animals out and get stuff ready. Thank you guys for being so patient. You guys were great.